<laughs> it's so good. Mm. Cherry pie. So good. Mm. Colonel Townsend Wheeland, one of my favorite uh, turn of the 20th century American adventurers, gun writers, uh, outdoorsmen type. They called him Mr. Rifleman. He's known pretty ubiquitously for his quote, stating that only accurate rifles are interesting. And I completely agree with Colonel Wheeland. The only accurate rifles are interesting. But one of my favorite quotes of Colonel Wheeland, a good rifleman plus a good rifle will shoot straight, see straight, think straight, and run our country straight. Townsend Wheeland, 1932. I think we're missing a little bit of that these days. There is massive amounts of ignorance anti-morality just straight up stupidity especially in regards to firearms and a lot of misinformation a lot of disinformation misinformation lying gaslighting all of the above my philosophy though has always been since I was very young that every man and woman Need to know how to shoot a rifle and shoot it well. Now the market we live in today, in this country at least, we are saturated with high-end rifles. We're saturated with options for precision rifles and yada yada yada. And we're also saturated with a lot of cheap junk. Let's not devolve too far into politics and all that crap though. Let's talk about fun stuff. Um, I love a good rifle. And I love precision rifles. And in today's market, with the manufacturing that we have available to us, you can get a really good rifle, capable of a lot of really cool, cool accuracy, for not much money. Somebody shooting. I love to hear that sound. Now, one of my favorite things is precision rifle. And I've built rifles for years now. Um, being being a rifle maker uh, on the side having FFL that kind of stuff so I don't buy factory rifles very often because um, typically the factory rifles or anything custom is going to cost a lot of money well outside of what I'm willing to pay right you know for, for an average rifle because um, I just build them myself so I got that going for me but I'm kind of a rifle snob However, I found myself this year in need of a an inexpensive hunting rifle uh, to take on a moose trip. Since my primary bolt action that I was that I use, I was actually loaning out to my dad to use for hunting, so I didn't have one of my own. I'm kind of a gas gun guy myself, but um, bolt actions also have a special place near and dear to my heart. I cut my teeth long range with a 308, a Savage Model 10. Um, out in the grasslands of Colorado and Wyoming and Nebraska. And that's where I learned long range precision shooting and I learned um, reloading as well. So when I was getting to looking around this year though, I needed to buy something inexpensive. I have a, a small budget, you know, and I just don't like a lot of the garbage out there. And I just couldn't find anything in the price range of what I wanted that offered the features I wanted. Because most of it's crap. I mean, really, it's like it, you, you may get a decent action out of some things. Like a lot of companies make an act, a rifle with a decent action and pencil thin, cheap barrels and really crappy plastic stocks. They sell them for about 700 bucks, and um, they're functional in a lot of ways, but they're just not precision or you know interesting. Just not that interesting. They're just cheap rifles that will spit a bullet out for her for weekend hunters. I am a rifle snob though. However, I came across CVA Cascade. CVA is a muzzle loading company. They've been doing muzzle loaders for a few decades now. They're really, really known for accuracy and quality. They are a sister company to Bergara. Um, so 
I can't remember where I came across this, probably online or YouTube, something like that. But the CVA Cascade kept coming up in conversations as a really solid base rifle for inexpensive. So, I got one on a whim. I got the CVA Cascade SB or short barrel model in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, we can go into uh, the semantics of why the 6.5 Creedmoor is potentially the best bolt action cartridge there is, and I specify bolt action. Um, all around it, all around bolt action cartridge there is for hunting or otherwise, except for extremely larger dangerous game. Um, we'll go, we could go into that in another video. I won't get into that here, but needless to say, I love the 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a super capable cartridge. I've shot it out to beyond 1,200, 1,300 yards. Um, so, and it's got more than enough energy power knockdown for most medium to large game. So that was my easy choice. Always been a fan of the 308, but in this case, I like something a little sportier. Um, 308's like your Ford F-150, or the 6.5 Creedmoor is like your Ferrari, you know? Or your, let's say your Ford GT. No, maybe not the Ford GT. Maybe the Mustang. Maybe we get, 308 is like your Ford F-150. Do everything you need it to do most of the time. 6.5 Creedmoor is like your Mustang, you know? Your high quality Shelby. When you want a little sportierness to it. And then you got the really high end, you know, the whiz bangers like a 300 PRC and stuff like that, seven millimeter PRC. That's like your Ford GT. That's that's where you get into that category. Now most people don't need a Ford GT. You're not gonna race it. You're not gonna be in Le Mans. You're not gonna be racing that kind of stuff. Um, equivalent to that, you're not going to be hunting elk. You're not gonna be hunting moose. Or well, elk and dangerous game, large game, kudu, that kind of stuff. Most of us can fall into that Ford Mustang to F-150 category just fine with a caliber. So I, that's where I usually land for bolt action calibers. I personally like functionally accurate cartridges that are capable at long range. The 308 is a perfectly capable long range cartridge. I've been shooting it for 25 years or more now. I absolutely love it. It's super capable at long range, but 6.5 Creedmoor is just a little bit spicier. It's got a little bit more swagger to it. Um, and when it comes to hunting rifles, I look for ubiquity in the cartridge, meaning I can find it. I don't buy factory ammo, but, because I haven't for years, I've reloaded for years, but the components are everywhere. They're, they're available all over the place for reloading and for, for ammo, um, you know, on, on the shelf ammo. That's what I look for in a cartridge. It has to, it has to be available to me. And the 308 and 6.5 Creedmoor are probably two of the most available cartridges, factory ammo or reloading, in our country. So, around the world, actually. In the Western world. So, um, the 6.5 Creedmoor was an obvious choice. I went with the short barrel model because I like shorter barrels. So this one has an 18 inch, the threaded 5 8 24 barrel, which I put a uh, muzzle brake on of some kind that I've had kicking around in the shop just to kind of test it out and see if it was even worth having on there. 6.5 Creedmoor is not an earth-shattering, bone-crunching cartridge at all. It's, it's something I would recommend highly for new use, new shooters, um, especially new hunters, because it's super capable. I took it on a moose hunt, fully confident that with my reloads, my 140 gram burgers, I could definitely put, put it through a moose. Um, had the energy, had the velocity, inside 500 yards, it'll go through two car doors in a, you know, in a bucket so to speak. So it was more than capable, um, super accurate this one is. It turned out to be really, really surprisingly accurate. I was actually really surprised for a cheap rifle. It was kind of a two-parter for me. I got it because it was cheap and I got it because my kids are coming up to hunting age and I wanted something inexpensive that they could learn to shoot on and I could pass down to them, you know? I heard really good reviews on the barrel. They are spun up by Bagara. So they're Bergara button rifle barrels on the CBA Cascade Action. Um, it's an inexpensive but not unpleasant stock on it. It has a polymer over mold, a little bit of camel in it and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's actually really nice. The barrel profile is a little on the thick side, which I prefer. I don't like skinny little whip barrels. Um, so this, this worked out to be a really good profile. It's light enough to huff around in the mountains, which I did up in Maine, um, you know, scrambling through the brush and climbing hills and 
going up in the ridge lines and stuff looking for moose so it was it was light enough for that maybe six six and a half pounds the rifle is um, the scope I have on it I have a Vortex Viper PST 2 to 10 the MOA version it's a pretty decent piece of glass lightweight pretty solid um, they're they're you know capable scopes for the price point and they have really good clear glass in them and you know you got a lot of MOA adjustment, lit reticle, that kind of stuff. Things that, that make it a really great overall hunting scope. And the 2 to 10 power range is pretty much all you need for most hunting scenarios. If I were going out west to hunt um, longer range, antelope or whatever, mule, mule deer, I might go for a little bit more magnification. But honestly, I've shot this scope out to 1,500 yards and I've not had any issues with it. Um, it it's just, it's solid. So... The whole overall package, you know, maybe only weighs about seven pounds. I've got, I don't carry bipod on it, not when I'm hunting, but I do carry a sling typically. Um, I like the Blue Force gear slings, they're a little sturdier. They have really good webbing on them. They're really rugged and they have an adjustment strap on them. You can pull sh sh quick to make it longer or shorter, which I find really useful in a lot of scenarios. Some of the main features that sold me on this rifle though, and the second I started shooting it, I was like, yep, they did it. They, the CVA did a good job with this Cascade. They won because um, it's the barrel solid, the action solid. It, it's a little bit, you know, kind of a cheap. You can tell it's a cheaper of an action so far as its construction and quality. Um, uh, just its machining. It's it's well machined. It's just not super precise and it's not super um, true. I guess you could say like you find on a high end bolt action custom, but that's not what this is. This is a factory rifle. Um, at an affordable price point for a large group of people and it performs but it does perform um, like a, a much higher end rifle so the action was solid um, the barrel I definitely trust the Bagara barrel definitely trust the Bagara barrel um, but the things that sold me detachable box magazine this is crucial, I think, you know, especially if you're getting in and out of truck and stuff like that and you're unloading and loading your rifle. The BDL system that is typical on the 700 and stuff, it's a nice system. It's been around for a while. It's time to do something new. Detachable box magazines is a no-brainer. Um, for an inexpensive rifle, yes. This is, yes, this is how you do it right here. Um, anybody who's not doing that as a manufacturer, putting out an inexpensive or even a mid-level hunting rifle, you need to. You need to start thinking that out. Uh, the stock's not pillar bedded, but that's an easy fix. If you want to get a new stock, you can go to Boyd's or something like that and get upgraded stock. I did I did reach out to the manufacturer or CBA, and there is a stock being made by Boyd's. So you can go online, get yourself a stock. It has a raised comb. It has adjustable spacers for length of pull. I myself, I have kind of short little T-Rex arm, and I am forever frustrated with the length of pull on rifles. Um, most of them are in that three, three and a half, 13 and a half to 14 inch length of pull, which is about an inch too long for me. So CVA did, had a major win in adding a an adjustable stock has these spacers in it. You can pop in there or, or pull out for shortening the length of pull. And the one key feature that pushed it over the top for me above all is the trigger. The trigger, my goodness, for a factory rifle, I don't think I've ever felt anything as light and crisp. Light and crisp, not just light. It's light and crisp so let's clear this out i've got mine set basically as it was from the factory which is about a pound and a half and it's just got a crisp clean break no fuss um and you can actually lighten it yourself with a set screw that is uh, adjustable right here um right there and you can get it get to it from the outside without taking your rifle apart so that overall i mean the, the stock's not the most expensive stock in the world you can squeeze it and chintz it like that but it, this is not a bench rest rifle this is a mountain rifle woods rifle hunting rifle varmint rifle whitetail rifle all the way um the accuracy also surprised me let's get into that all right let's just talk data on why this rifle for a cheap rifle inexpensive sub c at 700 could be a very interesting rifle indeed before I took it hunting, I didn't have a whole lot of time to work with it, so I kind of grabbed one of my grab bag, rummaged in my grab bag of loads, um, and pulled out some hunting loads I'd been working on for a different rifle, just to kind of see what I would get, and then I started dialing in with um, 
dialing in with some newer power that I was trying. So I was kind of putting this together a little quick. It wasn't getting great results right off the bat, but one of my loads that I will publish the data for my primary hunting load, not the data, but the primary hunting load I ended up with at the time before going on a trip, and this was before a lot of load testing and a lot of group testing, was 140 grain RDF load. Um, I'm excuse, excuse me, 140 grain VLD hunting load with stable powder in some middle of the road brass. And what I ended up with it was about a 2560 foot per second, uh, pretty stable load. The group sizes were okay. I didn't really get um, the best results out of them so far as it wasn't a quarter minute group or anything like that. They were they were they were good average around a minute, which for me, for the context of when I was going hunting, that was that was good enough for the time being. So I'll all right. We're all set up here at the target. 100 yard target. I've got some walking to do, but 100 yards, it's not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and admit the secret though. I actually prefer shooting groups when the conditions are less than perfect. Meaning the weather's not great. Maybe I'm hyped up on coffee and things just all around normal, not good. Because it gives me a more accurate, I guess you could say, judgment of my capabilities as a shooter and my rifles and my load capability with me behind it. The loose screw behind the trigger. So, I sometimes will do push-ups in between my groups too, just to get the heart rate up and do goofy crap like that because when you're in the field things are not going to be perfect and it's more relevant so i shoot my groups in a relevant way to what i'm likely to encounter in the field both my my condition as the shooter and the weather so sometimes i will wait for really bad weather to do my testing. Oh, I'm crazy. All right, my 140 VLD junk load was horrible. Holy crap, we're talking like five MOA. Four at least. Let's see if my good load, my good load is better. Let's try that out. I'm gonna go for the bottom left target. No, bottom right. That's more like it. That one's got a little more spice. All right, all right, everybody calm down. Let's see what I get down there. It's not a great load. Oh, it's because he's a crap rat. It's a hunting load. Are you going in there? There we go. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have to... Well, if I'd have had to shoot a moose, I'd have been alright with this load. But... That's alright. Not too bad. Let's back up to... Yeah, look, it was about, about, and I tested this again when I got back. I shot another group with that load, and it was about 1 MOA, 1.04 minutes of angle. At 108 yards is where I do my zero. So it's it's an eclectic thing, but it, it, it works. It was it was a functional hunting load for me. Um, so that's that initial data. My capabilities with the load, though, I will publish here on the screen, um, is what really impressed me. It was holding about a minute, so that's good for a cheap rifle with a grab bag of... of um, of a load that I just kind of slammed together for a hunt and some cheap brass with some basic primers and a decent powder. So um, I threw this together, 140 VLD, started taking data and testing velocity. Velocity and accuracy were more what I was along the road for for this hunt, um, being it is a hunting rig, it's not a match rig. So one minute of angle, I'm good with that for hunting on average. 
I would like better, yes, in this rifle, but I think is capable of better, and I'll show that shortly. But this is the data that I came up with um, punching in my Stralock Pro ballistic calculator, and I've verified this out to some distance, and i verified it with um, multiple readings and stuff like that. So if you look at it, for a hunting cartridge, for a hunting load and a hunting rifle in this short little package, this is actually a really capable and potent um, overall package, this General 6.5 Creedmoor. If you take the rule of thumb that a thousand foot-pounds of energy is basically what you need to get through a deer successfully, causing significant damage um, with bullet speed, you know, well over, well over 1,200 feet per second, this is a load I would confidently shoot a deer out to about 550 pounds or 550 yards maybe just a hair further than that if you subscribe to the 700 foot pounds of energy um school of thought which i've kind of always leaned for myself for deer or smaller game then 800 yards it's not unreasonable to think that you could do enough tissue damage to effectively knock down an animal now ethically hunting i wouldn't do that um unless i really had to uh or with a bigger caliber or longer harder hitting longer range caliber but this this one more than capable out to 500 yards confidently um if you were to drop it to 1200 or go to say baseline of 1200 foot per sec foot pounds of energy for something like a, an elk or a moose something thicker to get you know an ethical clean kill and plenty of tissue damage to drop it then you're still golden out to about 400 with this rifle in this setup so and i'll also have you know this at the bottom of the chart here at my elevation my altitude um, my barometric pressure, my, my conditions in 25 degree temperatures when I was testing, doing most of my testing, this load would stay supersonic out to about 1,200 yards. That's pretty phenomenal. This is one of the reasons I love the 6.5 Creedmoor. One of the reasons it's one of the better, I think, bolt action cartridges all around out there because it is an easy shooter. That's the kind of caveat is it, it's, it is easy to shoot. It is ubiquitous. It's easy to find um, either loading or, or factory ammo. It is available. And everybody makes a good rifle for it. So, all around her, I would call the 6.5 Creed more my new 308. I used to be a 308 aficionado to the core, still am. But when I started shooting 6.5 about eight years ago, kind of sold me. I like to move into a new cartridge, and I've been resistant to do so. And I'm not a Magnum guy. I don't like big Magnum cartridges, and I don't like. I mean, I do like a 306 is okay. 270s are fine, but I won't shoot those big guys if I don't need to. Um, I think you can do more with a more efficient bullets in a smaller package and get just as good if not better results. So here's where we are with that. Now, fast forward, come back from the hunt, I started doing a little bit more testing and I'll post some more of my results here. Um, All right, I'm back at the range. I'm gonna be testing the last three groups, um, three groups of three. Uh, I'll put the load data up and stuff like that as I speak about it, but. I'm not going to video it because it's about as exciting as watching paint dry, watching people shoot loads. So I'm just going to run this group real quick. Uh, three sets of three, nine rounds total, and see what we get. The thing that sold me, though, and I'll, on, on the next the next load I'm going to talk about, and on this it, rifle's accuracy potential, was this RDF load, 140 grain nozzle RDFs. I worked up very quickly before going on the hunt. I was just kind of fooling around to see what they would do. Um, with stay ball powder again, at 53 yards, I managed to put down a three shot group I show here. Um, and I was adjusting my scope at the time. So you see the two shots above it that I had shot once, adjusted the scope, shot gun once again, and made another adjustment. I was correcting as I go, um, trying to kind of dial things in a little bit. And then I fired my last three shots and I ended up with, um, a 0.26 minute of angle group. So quarter minute of angle group at 53 yards that was that was pretty darn spicy I, I was I was pretty happy with that result I was like okay well maybe we need to reconsider that so fast forward came back um, to the house here after you know finishing the hunt and I'm in the middle of deer season and I hunt on my property so I haven't done a whole lot of shooting because I don't want to you know really mess up the property but Getting towards the end of deer season, my son's already taken his doe. I haven't seen anything at all since then, so went out to do a little bit more group testing. Again, an eclectic and grab bag mix of um, 
a, a bullet and ammo selection this year because the things have been harder to get. So I had a bunch of Hornady 140 grain boat tail hollow points. I started throwing them together in some stay ball loads. This is one of my early ones. I haven't really tuned it at all, so I don't have a load tuned to this rifle yet. Most everything I've done so far is loads for other rifles, other 6.5s. So I'm kind of just putting this all together and seeing what works, trying out some of the loads I've already got done. Um, and this one, the boat tail hollow point load is one I already had done. Hornady Mixed Brass, Federal 200 Primers, Stay Ball Powder, 140 grain boat tail hollow points. Laid down a nice group, 40 degree weather, pretty calm, not too bad. 1.174 minutes of angle. All right, that's not horrible. It's not phenomenal. It's not something I would call like, oh my gosh, this is the best rifle I've ever seen in my life off the shelf. It's not. It's kind of in the good enough category for plinking, hunting, goofing off. And learning, learning, learning accuracy, learning precision, learning how to shoot, learning how to hunt. That is a load I would take to the range and have a lot of fun with. Um, anything kind of under a minute, a quarter, under a minute and a half, I'm pretty happy with for basic hand loads. Especially using the cheap brass I could get my hands on that has been reloaded several times. Um, cheaper bullets, the 140 boat tail hollow points are a cheaper bullet. They, they're right up there with the nozzlers and stuff like that in that they're inexpensive and not you know the Botel hollow points anyway they're not um not hard to find usually they're inexpensive and they're they're just fun plinkers now my top three bullets of all time are in this order sierra's top of the line if i go if i'm going for a match load i'm going with sierra if i'm going for a um if i'm going for a hunting load I'm most likely i'm going to go with nozzle or hornady their hunting bullets are phenomenal and if i want to keep things inexpensive hornady all right, moving on, I went to some 140 ELD, so Hornady's ELD, um, a extreme long distance round. Those are actually really capable bullets. I like the way they shoot in most scenarios. They, and in this instance, they worked out to be about 0.8 minute of angle at 108 yards, three rounds, um, with Shooter's World Long Rifle. Uh, long Rifle is a powder I was trying last year because I could get a hold of it. And it's a pretty capable powder, I kind of like it. I don't have a stay ball group worked up for that. I'm going to get some new brass and start working on some different powders and kind of tune in loads. So again, 0.8 minutes of angle. I'll take that. That's a great, that's a great, you know, goofing off load, uh, trying out load. Here again is my RDF load. Um, this one is a RDF load I developed for a different rifle. So I just pulled this out of the grab bag. Again, I didn't develop it for this gun. Threw them in the rifle, threw that on this group, and it worked out to be about 0.9 minutes of angle. That's not horrible at all. That's not a terrible group. This is the this is the the one group that really gives me hope for this rifle, and it is with Sierras. Sierras are my go-to, and um, I'm going to revisit this further in the future. It is the 130 tipped Match King load with. Uh, oh, well, I've shot this one with long range, uh, or yeah, with Shooter's World long long rifle powder. Um, I kind of want to test them out with stable and see how they do, but I ended up with a 0.749 three quarter minute group, which for me is amazing for this type of rifle and these type of scenarios. I will take that all day long. Um, if it were a match rifle, I would be looking for half a minute. I would be looking for quarter minute. This is not a match rifle. This is a basic hunting rifle, inexpensive, easy to get your hands on. Most people could afford short barrel, user configurable and i think extremely capable and my apologies camera shut off but i say i am saying that overall first impressions I'm, I'm i'm really really liking what i see out of the cva cascade i think it has a lot of potential i think swapping out the stock with some pillar bedding maybe a chassis system if you can find it that kind of situation maybe we'll do that in a future video do an upgrade to this thing i think it could really tune this booger in because the barrel's solid the trigger's solid the bolt is solid. It's got some frustrations. I mean, I didn't chase loads too far with this just to begin with because I haven't had time with the rifle. So I've kind of just gone with what I had, tweaked it a little bit and called it good enough for the hunt. The only real criticism I have about this is the machining on the bolt left a ridge around the firing pin hole. That when you chamber it, when you chamber it, When you chamber around, if you don't have your primer set deep enough or really deep, it digs a crater into the back of your primer. Haven't had it set one off on me so far. That's my only criticism with the rifle. If anybody's listening at Cascade or at CVA, 
If you watch this, that's an easy fix. I'm gonna fix this with my face mill and just whip off the edge of there. It's just it's just around the flash hole or the hole for the for the firing pin. It's just a little bit of it needs to be deburred basically. Simple operation. Easy fix. It is an easy fix. But that's my one annoyance mechanically with this thing. Other than that. Alright, so as you can see, um, from a group testing shooting in, in velocity perspective and caliber perspective, and the price point. You know, sub $700, sub 750 around there maybe, depending on where you're at. The CBA Cascade, especially in 6.5 Creedmoor, is one of the most interesting, inexpensive rifles I've ever bought. It's got all the capabilities you'd need as a hunter, especially a new hunter, young hunter in the 6.5 Creedmoor. You could take this rifle, and in most games, most scenarios in North America and Europe, um... And even South Africa, you can hunt the rest of your life with it. And it's going to hold up. Uh, especially if you're not burning your barrels out, you know, shooting thousands of rounds a year of, of really hot loads. And even if you do, it's a bar, you can get a new Bagara barrel spun put on that thing and life is good, man. You, you've got yourself a good solid rifle. I would say it's probably one of the best for the price point. Um, there's, some, there's some other companies making some decent stuff out there, similar price point. But this is, um, yeah, for the price point. I'd call this one my one of my go-tos. Um, it'd be hard to beat. It'd be hard to beat. Savage makes some stuff. I'm, I've always been a fan of Savage rifles, um, and they make some stuff that comes pretty darn close in the price point, but it kind of falls short in some areas as well. Their actions I love. Their, their barrels I love. The one real competitor to it would be the Bagara, honestly, the sister company. Um, is making making a fantastic rifle and similar price point with similar attributes and I I can't wait to get my hands on a Bagara as well but the CBA Cascade is one I would definitely pull off the shelf and go to hunt with and take it to town because you can get the groceries with it. Thanks for joining me again for a little bit of piping and ballistics, briar and ballistics, burly and ballistics, something like that. Anyway, thanks for joining me again.